Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Mueller, over here. Mr. Mueller, did you indeed interview for the FBI director job one day before you were appointed a special counsel? I, my understanding, I was not uh, uh, applying for the job. I was asked to give uh, my uh, input on what it would take to do the job, which uh, triggered the uh, interview you're talking about. So you don't recall on May 16, 2017, that you interviewed with the president regarding the FBI director job? I interviewed with the president and uh, it was, the about, FBI director it was job? about the job and not about me applying for the job. So, so your, your statement here today is that you didn't interview to apply for the FBI director job? That's correct. So it, did you tell the vice president that the FBI director position would be the one job that you would come back to, for? I don't recall that one. You don't recall that? No. Uh, given your 22 months of investigation, tens of million dollars spent, and millions of documents reviewed, did you obtain any evidence at all that any American voter changed their vote as a result of Russians' election interference? I'm not going to speak to that. You can't speak to that? Speak After to 22 that. months of investigation, there's not any evidence in that document before us that, that any voter changed their vote because of their interference, and I'm asking you based on all the documents that, that you was, reviewed. That was outside our purview. Russian meddling was outside well, your purview? Uh, but the, the impact of that meddling was undertaken by other uh, agencies. Okay. You stated in your opening statement that you would not get into the details of the Steele dossier. However, multiple times in Volume 2 on page 23, 27, and 28, you mentioned the unverified allegations. How long did it take you to, to reach the conclusion that it was unverified? Uh, I'm not going to speak to that. It's, in, it's actually in your report multiple times that it's unverified, and you're telling me that you're not willing to tell us how you came to the conclusion that it was unverified. True. When did you become aware that the unverified Steele dossier was included in the FISA application to spy on Carter Page? I'm, I'm sorry, what was, he, uh, what was the question? When did you become aware that the unverified Steele dossier was, intended, was included in the FISA application to spy on Carter Page? Uh, I'm not going to speak to that. Uh, your team interviewed Christopher Steele, is that correct? Not going to get into that. You can't, you said can't, the you can't tell this committee as to whether or not you interviewed Christopher Steele in a 22-month investigation with 18 lawyers. As I said at the outset, that is one of, those, uh, one of the uh, investigations that is, uh, is being handled by others in the Department of Justice. Yeah, but you're here testifying about this investigation today. And I am asking you directly, did any members of your team or did you interview Christopher Steele in the course of your investigation? And I am not going to answer that question, sir. You, you had two years to investigate. Not once did you consider it worthy to investigate how an un unverified document that was paid for by a political opponent was used to obtain a warrant to spy on the opposition political campaign. Did you do any investigation in that I, whatsoever? I do not accept your characterization of what occurred. What would, you, what would be your I'm characterization? I'm not going to speak any more to it. So you can't speak any more to it, but you're not going to agree with my characterization. Is that correct? Yes. The FISA application makes reference to Source 1, who was Christopher Steele, the author of the Steele dossier. The FISA application says nothing sources one's reason for conducting the research into candidate one's ties to Russia based on Sources 1 previous reporting history with FBI, whereby Source 1 provided reliable information to the FBI. The FBI believes Source 1's reporting herein to be credible. Do you believe the FBI's representation that Source 1's reporting was credible to be accurate? I'm not going to answer that. So you're not going to respond to any of the questions regarding Christopher Steele or your interviews with them? Well, I, as I said at the outset this morning, uh, that was one of the uh, investigations that uh, I could not speak to. Well, I, I don't understand how, if you interviewed an individual in the purview of this investigation that you're testifying to us today, that you've closed that investigation, how that's not within your purview to tell us about that investigation and who you interviewed. I have nothing to add. Okay, well, the, I, I can guarantee you that the American people want to know. And I'm, and I'm very hopeful and glad that AG Barr is looking into this and the Inspector General is looking into this because you're unwilling to answer the questions of the American people as it relates to the very basis of this investigation into the president and the very basis of this individual who you did interview. You're just refusing to answer those questions. Uh, can, can't the president fire the FBI director at any time without reason under Article 1 of the Constitution? Yes. Article 2? Yes. That's correct. Can he also fire you as special counsel at any time without any reason? I believe that to be the case. Under Article no, 2. Well, I, I would, hold on just a second. Uh, you said without any reason. I, I, I know that special counsel can be fired 
but I'm not certain it extends to for whatever reason uh, is given. Well, and you've testified that you weren't fired. You were able to complete your investigation in full. Is that correct? Uh, I'm not going to uh, add to what I've stated before. Right, my time's expired.